Hey, hey, what up, peeps? All right, P10C. We're doing a little uh, CZ time with the uh, Streamlight TLR1. And uh, we're doing a G code paddle holster with um, the hood. So it's going to be sweet, and it's going to be for a left handed person. So, yeah, we don't do a lot of left handeds on here. So, this is going to be uh, pretty fun. We'll start off by doing our light widgets. This is a uh, DIY mold. Again, I got DIYs in the very beginning because I had no idea about multi-molds. There's nothing wrong with them. I just prefer Tony's at multi-molds. But I have uh, have broken a couple of these. I have broken multi-molds, but they all work. So. Open that a little bit. And we're doing the one that goes across. Move on to this side. If you notice, I, I always start with the basics of what needs to go on here. The other side is the one that's getting the RTI plate, so I, I'm going to do that after uh, I get this one situated. And we're going to have to build up some blocking because this is already blocked. So when we put down our uh, the blocking that we use, not that one, for the uh, hood, uh, we're going to have to put, put it down. So no big deal. Just an extra step in the process. this all the way across all right now this is a uh, left-handed so we're using a RTI 33 this is what I like to use for the left-handed uh, reason being I could go ahead and mount the bar the bigger side right there so all I have to do is put something there so it's, it's easier to work with and it's not much of a pain in the butt which is good uh, I'm pretty sure I put all my blocking though to find the plates we need. We need that one. We might need that. Here we go. I had them up here. All right. All right. And now we uh, are going to map out everything that we need to do. So uh, first we're going to start with the hood. And this is a left-handed large hood. So we know that's going to go there. So let's take our marker and mark where it's going. We might go down slightly. but And this is left-handed, so we're going this way. But that's pretty much perfect right there. I'm not going to need any blocking underneath it because the majority of it is already uh, supported. Do a cross. 
right. Now, we'll mock that up and bend this across. And we know that the top is the pivot point, so we're going to go directly across from that, which is going to be yep, have a spot right there. So we know that this piece, all right, so let me uh, get the cap for this. I'm going to take this very thin piece and put it here. And then this we'll probably just throw right there. And that should be fine, but I don't really like the way that looks. So I'm not going to do that. So instead, put that in the center. We're going to look for another piece. That's another small piece. Nope, we're still going to see that. So let's take one of these, which again is fiberglass. And let's, uh, just like that. And needs to go a little thicker. So let's do a thinner piece and a bigger piece. Lock that in. You know it's going here. And I'm gonna slide it down a little bit so we can have the top right there. And it's gonna have its final resting point right there. I am happy with that. All right, now we have to do this guy. And luckily, this guy is short enough, so we could go ahead this here, and we know this is going to go right there. Square it up. it and I know for a fact I do not have a uh, retention plate for this so we're gonna have to make one no big deal all right so I am going to look this over that looks phenomenal all right I'm going to get the wood and we're gonna cut one Friendly reminder, I have my, my oven on and my foam on. That way the, the foam is getting nice and hot. And, yeah, I'm sad that we have to do it this way. No big deal. I just bought like eight feet of this stuff, so not gonna bother me. P10C TLR1. We're going to cut it on a combination of this scroll and the bandsaw. I so love this thing. She 
just robbed me. <laughs> Thanks, Al. Alright, might as well throw that in the fire. And we'll go over here and cut it out. Doing this one handed. Put a little BJ. All right. Right back up here. Check the fitment. Not bad for one handed. All right. And this guy is uh, black, I believe. Yep. It's going to be a black holster. So we'll go ahead and cut what we need. It is going to be a taco style, which. Explains why we're doing it this way. I think I've done one pancake style in my life for a, um, a thigh rig, and it was because it was a custom print, and the gentleman wanted to see all of the print, which would only work with that particular uh, holster style. So yeah, that's another thing you got to take in consideration when you have prints. Um, let me get examples. This works for IWB, OWB, either taco or pancake. It works for anything because it's the entire thing. Now, if you have something like this and you do an OWB, it's not going to work because it's going to be shifted uh, pancake style. So if you do an IWB, it's split in the middle, and that's going to be on one side, which is generally the opposite of where the clip is so you can see the whole thing. So you need to take that consideration when you're designing something, and you have to imagine the... Uh, the holster as it's finished, you know, and that way you know where everything is going and whatnot. So it works. Show you this print. It's all it's cats, unicorns, rainbows, stars, and donuts. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, back to this. Again, I'm going to take my largest tape. And hook that up. Reason being, we don't want the Kydex to fold underneath it because that'll ruin your holster. And uh, also... Do not, I repeat, do not get the scotch blue with the sharp lines. Do not get that because what happens is it actually has um, it has print on it. It has letters. And what that happens is it, it's heat transferable. So if you're making a holster and it's a lighter color and you press it, that is now permanently in the holster and it's not coming out. So do not use sharp line. I bought all this by accident. And... Uh, I was going to return it, but I figured I, I would use it at painting something at some point, so might as well. But, alright, so now we got to do a, a black piece big enough for this. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that, throw it in the oven. I'll bend it, pop it out, and show you. So I'll be right back. I also say this in every video. If you have something in the oven and you've been warming these up so that they're perfectly squishy and everything, so your oven is currently hot, it will take a fraction of the time for that kydex to reach the, the point of uh, being able to make the holster. So I literally just put it in there. It's already starting to bend. 
So the interior of this had to be at least 400 degrees before I put it together, uh, or at least put the Kydex in there. So just remember to don't walk away, you know, because it generally would take a few minutes for it to warm up, and now it's going to take less than that. So you can see it's already already going. So I'm going to go ahead and measure it, actually, because it's been in there for about 15 seconds, and it's already almost 300 degrees. So just take that in consideration. Don't walk away because you will ruin it. How can you not love? Look at that. Oh, so luckily, uh, before uh, before I actually put it in the press, I read the order form, and he uh, noted suppressor height sight, so we almost completely forgot that, but I added a piece of blocking on the top, so now you can see how high that actually is, um, but now we're going to go ahead and mark all the holes, drill everything, and clean this up, mount everything, and this should be ready to be shipped out. God, that looks good. Oh, awesome. And first thing to do is to pop it out. And we're confident with this, so we're going to go ahead and take this apart. There have been times when, uh, you know, I was new to holster making when I would have to press something and then see how it went and then press it again and, and whatnot. So uh, that sucks when you have to do that, but it is all a part of the learning curve. So we'll see. That curve is, uh, is a lot of fun. But anyways, we don't need these anymore. And we're going to go in. Let's see here. Line this bad boy up. See where our trigger ends. And that gives us that. Our retention on this light is right here. We're going to go right to the bezel, come down, bam, and then this one we have our choice. We can go up and just continue like that, or we could come up a little bit, go over and go whoop, like that. That would be the ideal choice if he has a um, threaded barrel. It's not stated that he does, so I think we are just going to be doing this right here. Just come down for that cut. And this, follow the body line to there, and this is coming straight up to the back, and then going down, and we're going to go right on the other side of this body line, maybe a hair higher. I'm not sure if this one takes an optic, but we are going to not take that chance goes to here. So we will do that. And then, um, let's see here. Oh, that should be good there. And we're also going to go from these two down to here with a, uh, a plate. I showed you in the other videos that plate is for um, strength, so it's definitely going to work. I'm actually straightening out a mold now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, drill the retention holes. We'll drill those three. We're gonna have to change our bit for a smaller one which is 5.30 seconds. The reason why we're changing that out is, well, we need it for this one. That way, instead of guessing, start the hole, take that bit back out, switch back to your 7.30 seconds, and finish it. hole you're not drilling is this one because we're going to do that later so get your ow, countersink and deburr all these holes on this side and then we use a special tool to get them on the other side 
So that's great. That's Pissa. And you can make that plate for here if you want right now, or you could wait. Um, I think I might might as well just do it now. So, grab a piece of scrap black. And then go ahead mark the holes where you're going to drill. This is out of 0 .080, so it's the same thickness. Oh, what you also want to make sure is that you're doing it on the right side. I was doing it on the wrong side. So, let's do it back this way. Otherwise, you'll have one shiny side and one, like, tactical gray side. <laughs> All right. Let's see if these line up. And they do. We'll open this up a little bit. Okay. And then, it's easier to do this when... Um, when it's cut, so we're gonna do that. So we're gonna put this here, we'll put a couple uh, nuts through it, and then we'll open it up, and then trace it on the other side. So let's go ahead and get this cut first, and then I'll, uh, I'll do that, so I'll be right back. Cut but not sanded, and looking at the holster, I decided to keep this. Uh, it's just growing on me, that the way that looks. So I'm gonna keep that. Uh, we're gonna go back to this part right here, now that it's easier to, um, put everything in. We're not going to here. We're just going to bolt to these three and then these two. So take a clamp and some rivets. You only need two rivets. Oh, you don't need rivets because their holes are too small. They're all right, so get some slotted posts. Make sure they're in the hole. Yep. Yep. Okay. So take that and this right here, and get at least one, and that's all you need is that one. So we got there. Drill that hole. Swap to this guy, square it up, start that hole, clean up your new holes, and then go ahead and check it. Bam. So I might have to open up these ones a little bit, but perfect. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to sand this all down, clean it up, and while I'm at it, I might as well do this one as well, uh, which is the reason why I'm doing this right now. So we'll take this, and we know this is just going to go straight this way. All right, and you could also trace the outline of that, if you wanted to. So it's like that. Come down, like so. So I will cut that out, and then I will uh, clean those edges as well, and get it going on this. 
had an epiphany as I was cutting everything. If you notice, I originally had this here and then cut this way, but I had an inkling. If it has suppressor height sights, that means eventually it's going to get a suppressor. So I went ahead and I cut the opening. That way, if he has a uh, threaded barrel, he can go ahead and do that. So that'll give us this profile now, uh, but it will allow him to use the threaded barrel with any protector he wants. So that will uh, be good for him. So let's get all this together. I sanded this as well. If you notice, this edge is beveled. This edge is not. I did that so it actually sits flat against it and doesn't have a rounded edge. So you'll see that in a little bit. And with all the hardware um, that you have for these, it comes with it when you buy it. So. But I also swap it out for hardware that I use. And then I throw these in a giant bin. So a lot of it I, I don't use, a lot of it I do. So, let's go. Now if you notice, these are massive. The ones I use are half inch, which are, see, and that's the difference. So I use half inch ones. Those are big, but because of this extra plate, we might be fine. So let's see. Let's see if those will be good. Because if they are, then we're just going to rock that. I already went ahead and deburred it with my handy dandy tool. You see that in uh, all the videos now coming up. Alright, so let's take a peek first and see. Doesn't stick out. Alright, so we could go ahead and use those. And as always, never tighten the top the top one that top one is the pivot for the strap this guy so if you tighten it it will not move you always want to tighten the bottom but because we have that plate underneath it we're gonna leave it loose that way we can do what we need to do so it does look like I'll have to cut it a little bit uh, which is no big deal I'm gonna go ahead and get the hardware I need for that and I went and got literally all the hardware I needed. Oh, well, I'm thinking about it. Might as well Loctite these as well. Oh, got a longer screw in there. on that but it's okay this little guy little guy right there don't worry about that little guy all right so again i might have to drill this plate which is no big deal but as long as this fits through it we are fine and that is a no-go so i'll just have to open that hole up a little bit no big deal actually Quite easy since I have the Dremel right here already. I'm not going to drill it because that'll change the position of the lower one, which that one I don't want to change. So I literally just bent the top plate out of the way and just made it, elongated that hole so it's good enough, like so. Do our half inch rubber washers. Get a third one in, half inch rubber washer. And the RTI plate, 
the thing we're putting on that I, there we go, happened to misplace. Start with the bottom one. Might have to use the two longer ones. Which is no biggie. Of course. Of course. Yep. I'm going to use the longer ones. Those are the same size. But of course, that plate puts it to a larger bolt. So I'll steal some of that. I'm going to steal some of that. All right, so at this point, I'm going to tighten this one all the way it can go, which is right there. All right, now what you want to do is grab your RTI wheel, the platform it's going on, and check the height. So if you notice, that right there is perfect because it's going to hit that. So now, oh, I locked it in place. You can take that off. And this is still loose, so go ahead, tighten that, and then put this one, just hand tight, and check it. I feel like we could go a little bit looser. I don't want to absolutely crush these. I like that. Oh. Try that again. All right, I'm happy with that right there. Cool. All right, take. L firearms. Send it around. Find where it's going to go. Drill that hole. Clean it. Take your deburring tool or whatever you have to deburr it. Clean it. This is going to be a quarter inch slotted post, an eighth inch um, rubber bushing. You can take the smallest guy that comes with the kit. And pretty much go as tight as you can go. Because it's going to tighten up against the Chicago screw. And there we have it. I feel like this is too tight. It's not giving that swing like it's supposed to. So this is locking up. See? Now it's not supposed to do that. So what I'm going to do is remove it. take a brand new one and put it on. All 
right. Uh, screwdriver. Have it anyways. So let's mount this. That you definitely don't want coming apart. Let's try that. It does the same thing. Let me try this right here. There we go. So it turns out I had this too tight. Ah, that's better. So that means this is still still good then. Let's try it out. Yep, yeah, so that's still fine. Okay. So that was user error. I had this way too tight. It happens. So Alright, and that's as tight as I want that. Alright, cool. And then Gotta do retention. It's good because these hoods are like twenty-four dollars each, and I hate burning money. Although I've always wanted to light a cigar with a hundred-dollar bill, and I can tell you that's coming. Even though I don't smoke. All right. I like it, and there's no way it's coming out. You can make it tighter if he wants to. Look at that, bezel's perfect. I like it. So, what did we learn today? Don't over tighten this one. Generally, the, uh, um, the slotted post is up against the screw, which allows it to uh, run freely. Uh, so, that didn't happen in this case, so we just loosened that up, and now this is the perfect so, and we added this retention plate that I'm going to do from now on when I have to do an RTI with a uh, hood because it get, gets rid of that flex. Even though, if you have one of these, it hits it. It hits it right there, which allows you to, to bend it. So, but there is a uh, left-handed P10C with TLR1. Woo! Happy bending.